In today's video, I'm going to check out kind of hidden features in Microsoft 365. These are features in applications that will make a major difference to you. So if you're ready to learn, let's go. Hey everyone, Andy here. Great to see you. On today's episode, I'm taking a look inside Microsoft Office in Microsoft 365. We're going to check out kind of hidden features that it's amazing how many people don't know that they're there. And the list doesn't include Copilot. I'm talking about tools and features that will just blow you away. And you go, why didn't I know about that earlier? Now, if you've not subscribed, we'd love to have you on board. So bump the subscribe button up there and ring that bell and come and join our learning community. And if you've got questions and comments, as always, get those down below. And if you want to learn more, then please consider signing up to my Patreon site uh, where you'll get access to full courses, monthly Zoom calls, and more. Okay, so without any further ado, Let's jump in and have a look at these top 10 features. Okay, for my number one here, just want to show you a couple of really useful tips. Um, you'll know that on this page, your Microsoft 365 portal, I can scroll down and I can get a list of my most recently used documents. And you'll even notice that on the left hand side, there's a big button that says OneDrive. Well, if you click onto that, there is a little bug here. And you'll notice that this bug, if I click onto the gear icon, this is the gear icon here. If I click onto that, you don't get much of a menu. In other words, if I've deleted a document or something like that, and I want to restore this document back, you would normally think, well, surely I can do it from here, but you can't. What you actually need to do is actually click on the waffle button. I call this a waffle because it looks like a waffle. And you'll, need, you'll notice here, there's another button that says OneDrive. So we click onto that OneDrive and you'll notice that this interface is ever so subtly different. Well, first of all, you can browse by the media on your in your Microsoft portal, which is great. You can also browse meetings. So things like any files that have been shared with you, there's none here, obviously, but um, they would turn up. If anybody um, has shared files with you, they'll also appear by people. And you think, well, that sounds very similar to that program called Delve. And you're absolutely right. So they've taken an older piece of technology and they've added it in here. But now that we're in the full Microsoft 365 OneDrive feature, I can come into my files. And if I go back up to that gear icon and look at this, if I click onto the gear icon here, I now get the full menu, including restore my OneDrive. So I can simply click on the drop down arrow here and you can choose when do you want to restore it back from? Now, you can go back as far as 30 days. So I can simply click onto the lever here, this little lever, and I can scroll back. Now, again, this is just a little demo account, but essentially what you would do is you would find the date that you want to restore back to, click on that date, and you'll see a list of those files here. So essentially all I do is select that file and then there is a restore button and it will restore that file back. And it doesn't end there. So what I'm going to do now is I go back into my portal. I just want to show you one other little thing. The recycle bin here. So that is, again, it's amazing. You know, you delete a file, you drop it into the recycle bin. And again, it stays here for 30 days. Ah, but did you know that it actually stays for 90 days? And you'll notice at the bottom of the page here, it says second stage recycle bin. So if you click into here, you get a further 63 days here. So again, you just simply select the file and you remove it back. So for a total of 93 days. How cool is that? Simple tip, but it works. 
Okay, so continuing on with Microsoft Office, um, here I am in PowerPoint. Now, you might think you know PowerPoint. PowerPoint has changed massively over the years, and these are just some of my favorite features. Now, we've always been able to go into the design option here, and you can choose these nice templates, and to be honest, they're okay, nothing dramatic. But what we also have is the designer tool here, and the designer tool will make suggestions and I'll tell you, even if you start with just a blank presentation, it does some amazing things. So you can scroll down to a page and it will make recommendations on, you know, what it can do with that slide. Some slides it won't be able to manage, but other slides it will be able to change the look and the feel of those. I love this feature. Now, the second tool that I want to talk about, um, if I come up to the slideshow menu here, we have in something here called subtitles. So the subtitles, you've got spoken language and also subtitle language, and this is amazing. So I can say, yeah, the subtitle language, let's say, is, let's say, English. So I'll come down here and I'll say, yeah, I want to have... Um, let's say English Australian or English United Kingdom, let's say, there we go. And I can then say, right, um, and the subtitle language, um, it can be anything that you like. So I can say, yeah, let's go for Spanish. So if I scroll down, I'll go for Spanish. And so you can choose, obviously, English and English if you want to. Um, but the cool thing now is I can say, right, with the slideshow, always use subtitles. So now when you give us a, a presentation, not only does it do the presentation, but it also determines the language. And you can see here, it doesn't always get it right, of course, but it actually does a pretty good job. So that is the AI generated subtitles in Microsoft PowerPoint. Now it doesn't stop there. Oh no, it doesn't. So I'm going to jump over here into the Microsoft 365 portal now. And in the portal, if I go back to Microsoft 365, I'm going to click in here and I'm going to go into PowerPoint here. So in PowerPoint, what I'll do is, do I have any PowerPoint presentations? Let's just have a quick look. Okay, I've got one PowerPoint presentation here. Now, everything that I just showed you is relevant here. So you can do absolutely everything you can present, you can edit, you can do everything here just exactly the same. So the next thing I want to show you is PowerPoint Live. And this rocks, by the way. So not only can you present in Teams, but you can also present live. And you can choose, obviously, who you want to present to. And you can choose your audio settings, depend, you know, select the microphone that you're using and so on. Um, and this is where it gets really clever. So you can choose the spoken language. Again, it, did, it will detect your spoken language. And you can choose the subtitles here. Now, if you don't choose subtitles, don't worry about it. So what you have here is I can say, I can go ahead and I can present live here. So with PowerPoint Live then, what I'm simply gonna do is I'm gonna come up to Slideshow here. Now this feature is only available in PowerPoint Online. It's not available on the local version. And you can see you can present in Teams. You've also got the same subtitles feature here. You can also do a, a rehearsal with an AI version of a coach, which uh, gives you some good presentation tips, by the way, which is really useful. What I'm going to do, though, is first of all, you choose the permissions. So I'm just going to say anyone can use that. And then I'm going to say I want to present live. And you essentially get a QR code here. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to take this QR code and I open up my browser and you can now see I am now presenting live so I'm going to say yeah I want to go ahead and show the slides and I you can see I'm now showing you the slideshow but more than that you'll notice here it says English so I can change the language and you can choose a multitude of different languages so for example if I want to for example, use Spanish. So you could have an entire audience with this particular tool all speaking different languages. 
That is really cool. That, my friend, is PowerPoint Live. And when you've finished, you simply come out of the presentation and I'm going to say, yep, I want to end this presentation. And once you end the presentation, um, your viewers will then be able to rate the presentation, say how wonderful you are, and you can then give feedback. Isn't that cool? So, of course, I then give myself five out of five. Yeah, and that is PowerPoint Live. Very nice. Okay, so what are some of the amazing things that you can do in Microsoft Word? And these are just some of my favorites. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Word Online. I love Word Online, by the way. It's so powerful. Um, and you can see I've come in here. And first of all, you'll see this thing called a readability score. And this is a AI uh tool. This is the Microsoft Editor tool, and you can see it's on here. And you can see it's given me a score of 88%, and it's saying, okay, there are improvements to be made. And you can see here it can detect the type of writing that you're doing. So it's detected the fact that I'm doing an employee-based report. But again, you can change that style, so you can make it more casual, more professional, and so on. Um, it will check your spelling and it will obviously check your grammar as well. So in this case, it's, it's saying, OK, there are three potential issues and this will walk you through the tool. And you can then obviously say, do you want to ignore that or do you want to correct it and so on. So the next thing that I want to show you then is I'm just going to pop up here and I'm going to come to the file menu. Now, with the file menu, you could always create a copy and you could share this with other people. And these are basically the same settings that you might get, for example, in SharePoint or in OneDrive. The other thing that I really like is the fact that you can export it and you can directly export it as a writable or read only PDF file. Um, you can download with PDF with you any comments that you've put into the document. Um, you can you know, can export it directly to PowerPoint, uh, Kindle for a Kindle reader, and you can even transform it directly to a web page as well. Now, this particular document, as you can see, is an employee uh, engagement, and you know it's quite a nice report. So, one of the things that you might want to do is I'm going to say, yeah, I want to deploy this or export it rather. I want to, let's say, create a PowerPoint presentation out of it. So off it goes and it will make some recommendations. Uh, which template do you think you might like? So I might say, you know, this one looks pretty good. Let's have a look at that. And I'm now going to export my content. And what this now does is it creates a brand new PowerPoint presentation. And lo and behold, how cool is that? Look at that. So we now have a new PowerPoint presentation. Again, the design tool comes up and says, you know, you might want to customize it. You might want to change it a little bit here. Uh, and again, you can add slides and so on. Now, this doesn't ch damage your original document. But I love this feature. I think it's so cool. Okay, so the final thing that I want to show you here can be found at the front page here. So Microsoft have recently updated this page. Not only is it more fully updated and integrated into things like SharePoint, and you can find your documents here. If you're looking for a particular document, you can also click into the search bar. This is a unified search bar, by the way. So it's right throughout all your applications. So uh, OneDrive, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Teams, and so on, obviously depending on your license as well. So obviously if I type in the word sales, it will look for anything with the word sales in. Um, you can also show more results. I love this, by the way. You can filter them. So, you know, files by sites, by people, for example, by news messages and so on again you also get the the really nice preview features as well so you can see is this the document that i wanted to open up that's just a, a little sideline so the search bar i find is is absolutely awesome by the way um now while we're here one thing that i will mention is that you can also create a document from this front page as well so if i just come back to the front page here 
you can see it says, hey, you know, you want to create a, a new document. So what kind of document do you want to create? I want to create something new. So it takes you into this recent template page. So for example, I can create a document, workbook, form, a quiz, notebook, list, and you get presented with a whole bunch of different PowerPoint uh, templates. And you can specify what kind of templates that you want to have. So, for example, I love Microsoft Lists. I don't know if you've seen Lists, but it's great. So you can create either a list from scratch, you can use an existing list, or you can even use Excel as a list, which is great. And you can also use what we call a comma-separated value file, a text file that's separated with uh, commas. We also have a whole bunch of different templates as well. And these are constantly evolving, by the way. One of my favorite ones is one of the most useful things that you might have in a company is travel requests with an approval uh, procedure. So I, can, I might say, yeah, I want to use this. Uh, you can change the name. You can put in a little description. I'm going to use the blue and you can see it's detected there. It's a little plain. You can decide where you want to store it. So do you want to store it in a team or do you want to store it in a Microsoft 365 group or something like that? So I'm going to go off. I'm going to create this. And once it's been created, it then essentially creates a list. In other words, it's a form. And you can then say, hey, you know, you can have this on a website and somebody wants to fill in a request. No problem. Let's go ahead and fill in the details here. Um, as with all these things, you can also export this as well. This is particularly useful in Teams, by the way. I love this feature. Um, all right, so there we go. Just a few little features here. So I love this Create option, which is on the main uh, Microsoft 365 homepage. So definitely check out that. There's some really nice templates there that you can use. So there you have it, my tips and tricks for Microsoft 365 and Office. Hey, listen, I really hope that you found those useful. And don't forget that if you've discovered tips and tricks, get them down below. Let's share them with everybody. All right. Thanks so much for joining me this week. I really appreciate it. Hit the like button if you've enjoyed it, and I'll see you soon. You take care. Thanks. Hey, thanks so much for dropping by today. Here's a couple of videos that you may enjoy. And while you're here, go ahead, click on the subscribe button and you won't miss out.